Hello everyone, here is Dara, a UX UI designer from Sidon. This is already the fourth episode of our feature series UX Upgrade, an exciting journey on a high-speed design mobile across the constellation of design patterns. We learn and apply best practices established by the UX community to master our practical skills and have a good time along the way. Past issues have focused on analysis and improvement of real-world designs from the web, and I believe this was quite interesting. But now let's get even more inventive and try a new format for our workshop, because what is design if not permanent search and experimentation? UX UI design is a relatively young realm that is not yet cemented by a myriad of standards. Therefore, numerous UX specialists from all over the planet feel free to explore, revisit, challenge and rearrange its fundamentals and concepts. So I'm going to pick one of the UX-related articles and explore it critically and insightfully together with you. Hopefully this will not only enrich your knowledge on the subject, but also break the spell of accepting the deductions of design blindly. Fasten your seatbelts and let's go! Today our arrival station is user onboarding. I'll take a glance at the article Designing the user onboarding experience by John Ozusel and expand on his ideas and examples to give you a broader vision of the subject. For the record, by the time of writing this text, John was the head of growth at User Guiding, focused on streamlining the onboarding experience of various digital products, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. This video will hence bring a double value to every business owner knowing firsthand how much it hurts when end users disappear from your platform after the very first interaction with it. But keep in mind though that this article is just an opinion from the perspective of business analysis and marketing, so stay sharp and arrive at your own conclusions. To begin with, what is user onboarding after all? Some designers associate this concept with some sort of a guide to a product. Others close their eyes and see beautiful screens with welcome and greetings on the first launch. But in reality, onboarding is not an item, but a process. Complex, multidimensional and preferably enthralling. Its purpose is to familiarize user with your product set the vector of their in-app actions and provide all the necessary information and knowledge to make a product fully operational for a customer. How exactly are you going to do this and what methods to use? Only your imagination is the limit. While clothes make the man, onboarding makes the product. There are no second chances to impress your end user and earn their trust. And without trust, customer retention and loyalty are pure science fiction. A potential user expects that your product will become that very long-awaited Prince Charming that will soothe their pains and make life easier. That is exactly why it is so crucial for the onboarding process to create a positive long-term impression in their minds. Otherwise, a user may, who am I kidding, a user will, quit your site or app to never come back. It is not just a theory. Dozens of SaaS companies learned from their own experience serious implications of the quality of user onboarding for their businesses. For example, streamlining the onboarding process at the virtual workspace platform Team Twine reduced the customer churn from 65 to 30%. Now let's proceed to the tastiest part of our workshop – practice. Take your laser scalpels, we are going to dissect and explore the anatomy of some best practices used in the onboarding process at trend-setting websites and apps. Good practice for the first launch of the product is filling in personal data such as username, interests, a profile photo, etc. This is how Twitter does it, by offering customized topics and selected accounts that may be of greatest interest or relevance to you based on the preferences indicated in the profile section. As a result, each session on Twitter becomes growingly enticing, since a user knows that a myriad of events and subjects and people exciting precisely their mind await in the newsfeed. From my own experience, applying this practice in the wrong way may on the contrary lead to devastating effects on user experience. For example, never ask users for personal details that have nothing to do with the customization of their content. Well, if you are Twitter and creatively explore every way to personalize the digital experience of your customers without great fiscal risks, then do everything you like. Otherwise, be extra careful. You got the point. 
Initial setup is not enough to make the onboarding a piece of candy, even despite the efforts a user invested in filling in a profile. So let's brainstorm other potential sources of their motivation to get back to the platform. I think SoundCloud can pitch a good idea. At this cloud-based streaming platform, immediately after completion of a sign-up process, a user sees playlists with trendy songs and thoughtful mixtapes, again tailored according to the particular taste of a user. I have to say, this is my favorite type of onboarding. It can be perfectly exemplified by the task management tool Todoist. After signing up, you are offered to create several tasks, set their deadlines, add them to active sections or projects, etc. In this way, a user doesn't merely observe a product's functional capacities, but can immediately touch and feel it from all sides and make a well-founded decision if it fits them. In his article, John Ozusel introduces the triple A's rule as a way to create efficient and successful onboarding. The first A, accommodating, means giving a user all the tools needed for using a product. The second one, assimilating, provides a user with knowledge, enabling their understanding of how exactly, in what way, a product should be used. Finally, accelerating implies conveying your product value proposition as soon as possible, but also as best as you can. Imagine you're a James Bond chasing a beautiful girl to give her a bucket of beautiful flowers. You are to be quick and still careful not to damage your delicate cargo in the rush. John also distinguishes three basic components of effective onboarding. First, highlight the main functional characteristics, making your product unique. Explain to a user why they are to prefer your product to those of your competitors. Be clear and concise. Second, provide a user with an opportunity to adjust the product to their needs and interests. This is a brilliant first step in building good and lasting relationships between a customer and the brand. Third, provide clear instructions on how to use your application. This applies to both using the product as a whole and the configuration of individual modules, such as profile photos or administering user interests. Well, we have just covered the best onboarding practices. Tired? Wait a little, you'll catch your second wind. We are going to cover them in the next video. Thanks for watching and see ya!